Hey, this is Zircon, and in this video, I wanna show you a fun little effect that I created in FL Studio from scratch using nothing but stock FL plugins and the patcher tool. Now, if you don't have FL Studio, you can still apply some of these same techniques. I just find that patcher makes it a lot easier to do. So if that sounds interesting, then buckle up and let's get started. So here we have the lovely user interface for the effect. And before I show what it is and how I made it, let's just hear what it sounds like. I have a simple unison saw sound with a little bit of drive and a little bit of noise coming from pigments. This is dry. Just kind of like a dirty bass sound that's good for layering or processing. And now what I'm gonna do, intensity 50%, this tool can go between a phaser or comb filter type sound to more of a spectral filter type sound. If I increase the intensity, you're gonna hear it kick in. Let's do inverted. So that's all pretty fun, right? And then we can also double the effect. So what the heck is going on here? Well, this is what it looks like under the hood, and it looks very complicated, but actually what it is is essentially just two EQs running in series, and there's a bunch of mathematical equations that transform the knob positions on the control surface page into band frequencies and intensities, although the intensity part is pretty simple. It's basically just up or down from the intensity knob. So with this EQ open, let's do a sweep. And you can see that all of the points are moving at the same time, but they're maintaining their relative distance. It's kind of like a spectral resonator, I guess. Sure, let's call it that. And then the frequency distance knob is controlling the relative distance between the EQ band frequencies. I think it sounds pretty interesting. And also in FL, if you switch to linear phase EQ mode, you can see the phase shift now goes away and the tone is very different. Pretty intense stuff, I know. Now, in a way, this is like a filter, but we're still hearing a lot of the frequencies that aren't being boosted. And so what I figured out is if you throw on an instance of something like Soothe, and then you just output the delta, so pretty much these are only the resonant frequencies, then you can do stuff like this. <laughs> So Soothe is basically tamping down all of the frequencies that are not resonant. And you, you can throw something like an OTT type compressor on it if you want to get even more intense. So that is what it sounds like in a nutshell. And you can imagine that if you make your synth patch even more intense, then it's going to sound even more interesting. So that's our updated synth sound. And now let's use the effect. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, lots of fun sound design possibilities, and you can find this patch in the video description, but let's talk a little bit more about how this is made. Fundamentally, what we're doing is we're just sweeping the EQ bands, which of course you could do this just with a whole bunch of automation clips or MIDI automation, connect to hardware controllers, but uh, it would be pretty tedious. So I came up with something more usable. So the way it works is that we have two knobs that control frequency. The first knob is frequency sweep, and the second knob is frequency distance. So I'm gonna call these knob A for sweep and knob B for distance. And then each EQ band uses something which in FL is called the formula controller. And the formula controller can take up to three different input variables. These are just anything that creates an automation signal of some kind. So this could be some kind of internal LFO. It could be a knob on the surface page. It could be something coming from the keyboard. Basically, it's some kind of input from zero to one. And then you can see there's a formula here, which tells the formula controller, what do we do with these three variables? In this case, I'm not even using the third variable C. I'm just using A for frequency sweep, and then I'm using B for the distance again. If you look in the bottom right, you'll see this is the output value. So 0.2 is what is getting sent into the parametric EQ. The current position here is 0.2. And now if I turn this up all the way as high as it can go, then the output value is now 0.7. We can see that that first band is now all the way up here it's not actually going the entire frequency range. And that's on purpose because I didn't want it to go all the way down here in these very low frequencies. It's not very usable. And then also because this is the first band out of seven, if this went all the way up to the top, then the other six bands would just be inaudible. So I had to come up with a formula for how to limit the range of that band frequency. And so the formula goes something like this. We'll ignore the first part for now where it says max 0.16. And I know this is a little bit of math. Your eyes might be glazing over, but I think it's I think it's pretty interesting. And you can take this and you can use it in your own patches. The first number here is the base value for the band. 0.2 means no matter what the position of this knob is, 0.2 is, is our starting point. And then we add 50% of whatever knob A is. Now I'm gonna move A so that A is one. Well, what's half of one is 0.5. So 0.2 plus 0.5 is 0.7. It's very simple. This next part here is saying for whatever B is, we're gonna make it negative, first of all, so negative one. And we could also just rewrite this like, like this, a little bit simpler. Take that and then we multiply it by minus 0.3. Whatever the value of B, which is our frequency distance knob, we multiply that by negative 0.3. So now that's moving the band back to the left a little bit. And if you reduce the value of A all the way down to zero, and we increase B, now we're actually going to the left from our original starting point, which makes sense if we look at the spacing of the bands. And if I, let's say, set the frequency sweep in the middle, I'm going to increase the distance and then just pay attention to the leftmost band. You'll see that as I increase this knob, it's going to move to the left instead of to the right. I guess on the screen, it looks like I'm pointing right, but I'm pointing to my left. You get the idea. Anyway, that is the basic formula. It's saying, take the frequency sweep and move it around from a base value. And each of these bands has a different base value because if they didn't, they'd all be on a single frequency. And then add part of this knob range. We're clamping the maximum possible range. And then also multiply some percentage of the frequency distance knob. Each of these bands gets a slightly different percentage of the frequency distance knob. Band one gets minus 0.3. And if we go to band seven, that gets positive 30% because we want that seventh band to actually move in the opposite direction. That's what's creating that in and out type effect, it's moving the bands further apart from each other or bringing them closer together. And it's just doing that with some simple math and saying the bands on the, the left, we want to move them to the left. And we do that by multiplying by negative B. And then the ones on the right, we multiply those by some percentage of positive B. Then there's also a simple floor function. That's what this max part is here. So this is saying no matter what, just don't ever go below 0.16. So what would happen if we change some of these values more? So let's say we we want more possible range. So I'm gonna multiply A by 0.6 instead of 0.5. And in fact, let's do 0.7, why not? So now if we move the sweep knob, we get more overall range. Now we're actually exceeding the uh, right side bounds. I don't know, sounds kind of cool.
That's kind of interesting too. Who knew that using math could create so many interesting audio effects, right? The rest of this actually isn't that interesting. The band enabling stuff, this whole formula is just controlling how many bands are active. It's just some math to make that possible. And there's also a button that will invert the disabled bands, which creates its own interesting effect. <laughs> Now we get a combination of boost and cut. This is pretty neat, if I do say so myself. Now, with all this in mind, there are some other things that are possible here. We could assign an automation clip to this. We could link it to a physical MIDI controller. But FL gives us some other tools that we can use for modulation. For example, I've layered the pigment synth with an instance of the Fruity Envelope Controller. When you send it a trigger signal, like a MIDI note, it starts up an envelope and it outputs that envelope. But at the moment, the envelope that's being output is not linked up to anything. So to change that, I'm gonna open up our surface, right click on frequency sweep, and let's say link to controller from the menu, we're gonna use fruity envelope controller articulator one. And now, and if we want to change the shape of that envelope, for example, we can make it up, then down. And let's say we want it to just stay down afterwards. And just to show again the difference between regular phase and linear phase, I'm turning off linear phase now. But the envelope controller can do more than that. It also has an LFO. I'm going to turn off the envelope effect, and now we're gonna use the LFO instead. So we're gonna enable it down here, and then we can change the LFO shape. But this has more than one articulator, so we can use the first envelope articulator as an LFO on frequency sweep. And then the second one, let's use that to affect the frequency distance. So I'm gonna attach this to articulator two. Maybe something like this. You can even use the envelope controller to basically do key tracking. Let's keep frequency sweep on articulator one and watch how this works. If we go to articulator one, and then I'm going to disable the envelope. I'm gonna disable the LFO. It is not moving at all. So now let's go to the keyboard mapping page and let's do something like this. So now the value is going to depend on what note is played. How about this? This is kind of the lowest note I would actually play, the C. And let's say that's the highest note I would play. So now let's see what the range is. And we can see this in action if we look at the knobs too. And by the way, the way I am triggering the envelope controller is I'm using a layer and I'm layering the synth from pigments with the envelope controller. It's pretty straightforward. So this is how you would do it. If you have a layer, you right click on the channels that you wanna connect, this little green rectangle there. You hit set children. And now when you play the layer, it triggers both of them. And 
And there you have my off the wall spectral EQ phaser filter thing. You can find the download for this patcher effect in the video description if you use FL. If you don't use FL, I know that Live and Reaper can do the same kind of thing if you use some of the built-in tools to control EQ bands. Virtual Riot had a great video about cursed EQ shapes recently, which is kind of my inspiration for this. But yeah, let me know what you think. Have you ever used either Patcher or the Formula Controller or the Envelope Controller for that matter? I wanna hear, leave a comment. Anyway, this has been Zircon. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.